I'd love to hear your thinking as a leading thought investor. Where is the value going to accrue in this incredible value chain from chips and power and real estate and large models and applications? Are they all equally uh, important to invest in? Yeah, so I think, um, as, as people have been saying, it's such a gigantic market. It's the biggest market we've ever seen that there's going to be kind of money to be made everywhere. I think the issues and challenges are different at the different layers. So if you look at the kind of hardware infrastructure side, chips and data centers and power, um, the big, there's no question in 10 years we're going to need more of all of that. Like, there's, there's no doubt at all. Um, but uh, the thing about that is, okay, how does that progress and uh, how do you finance it? So if you look back to the internet, which you recall, mm -hmm. um, we had the biggest bandwidth shortage in the world in 1999 and the biggest I, I bandwidth glut ever Ak in 2001. Akamai, Akamai was charging whatever they wanted to back then. Yeah, it was the most bananas thing. And how could you possibly have too much bandwidth in 2001? It didn't make sense, right, if you look back historically. Mm -hmm. But what happened is the bottleneck moved. So the bottleneck was bandwidth in 1999, but then it became, you know, how fast could the server spit out the bits? Did we have load balancers that were good enough? You know, these kinds of things. And then we didn't need the bandwidth because we were stuck in other places. And already we've seen kind of the price of NVIDIA chips this year drop in half. And you go, whoa, how is that happening? Well, we have this data bottleneck that's kind of becoming a sort of serious thing. And then, like, we're going to have a power bottleneck, clearly, and, and, uh, and other kinds of things. And then we'll have a cooling bottleneck. And so if you're financed with NVIDIA profits, then you're probably good. But if you're financing a data center with a lot of debt, you could lose it. You could get upside down very fast. So you have to really be thoughtful about that. Then if you go to the next layer, the kind of foundation models, the, uh, what we call the state-of-the-art models, Anthropic, OpenAI, Gemini, uh, Llama, that's a really, so that's 80% of the software market. Everybody has to use it for infrastructure, so every application, everything, calls on it. I'll bet <laughs> Travis has it as part of his infrastructure, there's no question. Um, so that's just a big and very fast growing market. But it's really interesting uh, in that the price of a token has fallen a hundredfold in the last two years. And the most powerful technology in the yeah. world is, is almost free. Yes, it's almost free. Like the, the prices are dropping like crazy, but revenue is still increasing. So the size of the market is huge and the price competition is really intense like much more intense than you would see in this complex of technology at this stage normally. And then we're kind of, uh, we're asymptoting in certain places. So if you look at the growth of GPT-2 to GPT-3.5 versus the growth, uh, you know, in terms of intelligence of 3.5 to 4, 2 to 3.5 is much larger, even though we spent way more money going 3.5 to 4. That's because we're hitting a bottle, you know, like, it's not the end of it, um, it's not going to asymptote forever, but it does imply that there's going to be an architectural change. And so even though the revenue is so huge in this market, there could be new players that emerge. We could be search before Google when we had 37 search engines mm. and none of them were Google. Uh, and we can't even remember who any of them were now because they don't matter. Um, so that's the kind of trickiness there. And then in the application layer, you know, Travis hit on a really interesting thing, which is big companies can optimize very fast with AI. And so as a new company, you have to ask the question, a new application, can I, um, you know, can I get a, to market faster than the big company can get a good product? And that's the race. And I'd say, look, in some cases, it's the biggest private equity opportunity of all time. In other cases, we made it just to give you a, an idea of how fast you can build a good product and take the market. We made an investment in a dev tool company, which is like the slowest growing stuff ever because you're selling to engineers and engineers hate buying stuff because they can build it, of course. Um, and this thing has grown from zero to 40 million in revenue in three months. Now, like, you know, like three years would have broken the world record for a frickin' dev tool. Um, but that's, so they're gonna take the whole market before anybody can build anything as good as they have. And so that's certainly possible.